welcome to Bearded Meeple. I have people say to me, hey, what's your favorite card game? Or, oh, you should do a top 10 list of your favorite worker placement games. Thing is, I've probably only played about four or 500 different games, and there's literally thousands out there. I haven't even begun to scratch the surface. Well, today's game is no exception. Till a week ago, I never even heard of it. I played it two or three times, and it was like, oh my goodness, I love this game. It plays two to four people, ages eight plus, in about 35 to 45 minutes. It's brought to us by Z-Man Games and designed by Phil Walker Harding. It's Cacao. Let's take a look at it. In the game, each player receives a player board, a meeple, and a set of tiles. There are also sun discs, jungle tiles, cacao fruit, and gold that will be worth points at the end of the game. It is through the placement of your personal tiles next to the jungle tiles that they will activate. What you'll receive may depend on the number of meeples present to the adjacent tile. By placing next to a plantation, you'll receive fruit to place on your player board. By playing next to a market, you'll be able to sell that fruit for varying amounts. By placing next to water, you're able to move your meeple along your player board, hopefully gaining more points as the game progresses. By placing next to a temple, whoever has the most meeples will have a majority to gain the most points at the end of the game. By placing next to a sun token, you're able to receive a token, and towards the end of the game, by spending the token, you can place any remaining tiles over top of one of your tiles already in the game and reactivating. By placing next to a mine, you simply gain that much money. Let's take a look at gameplay. At the start of the game, each player will shuffle their tiles and draw three. You place two random jungle tiles in the middle of the play area and you draw two from the stacks. They will be placed next as the board expands. You're basically going to be building a checkerboard. As a person places a tile, they'll get the items based on the number of meeples adjacent. I have one meeple next to water, so I'm able to move my token ahead one on my player board. I have two meeples next to one plantation, so I receive two fruit tokens. And play continues. As the next player places a tile, they would move ahead by one. That's all they receive. However, whenever two player tiles create a vacant jungle space, at the end of that player's turn, they add another tile to the board of their choosing. As a tile is played, all touching tiles will then activate. They would receive two plantation fruit, purple would receive nothing. The game has progressed, but let's take a look at what each tile does again. By placing next to a mine, you're receiving that much money for each meeple you have placed next to it. Placing next to a market, each meeple can sell one fruit for that amount of money. Next to a plantation, each meeple receives that many fruit for your player board. Next to a water hole, you move your token on your player board ahead that many spaces. Next to a temple, it's majority rules, so currently white would get the six points. However, at the end of the game, when all the jungle tiles have been played and you have some tiles remaining, instead of playing next to a regular board piece, you can spend any sundials that you've collected in the game you're able to hold up to three, you can spend it and then place one of your remaining tiles over top of a tile on the board. Purple now has a majority with four meeples and would gain the six points at the end of the game. The player with the most points is going to win. And that, my friends, is Cacao. This game is fantastic. I loved it. I'm only going to say good things and I don't really know where to start. The components are good quality, the artwork's nice, I love tile-based games, and while there is some randomness of what you're going to draw and what's going to get placed on the board, there's multiple ways to get points, so you really have to strategize on how you're going to place them. 
The game is really easy to learn, took us less than five minutes. We played it in under 45 for sure, so we just played it again and we loved it even more. One thing I will say, the insert is really nice, but once you take the punch outs out of the box, there's some space there so everything can fall all over the place. I simply took the punch outs, glued them together, put a nice cover on it, solve the problem, everything stays in there solid. Just like this game, it is solid, really, really good. I do hope you check it out. I'll talk to you again soon.